are Asians benefiting from being white? Or what about recently arrived Nigerian immigrants? Literally, I have zero white European blood in me. Fitting into white systems as a cog and getting paid for it is an advantage. What they can do to help more underserved communities, whether that's underserved Asians or underserved non-Asian communities. Do Asians benefit from white privilege or are they succeeding despite a lot of anti-Asian racism? And are these even valid questions? Let's talk about it. Welcome everybody to the Hot Pop Boys. David and Andrew here. We got another viral and controversial article about Asian America. David, we're gonna break it down. What's going on? Oh my goodness. You probably could make a thousand videos about this, but Andrew, Natasha Kumar Waraku wrote a piece in the Boston Globe that got the internet in a fur. We're talking about Reddit, Instagram, Twitter. She basically said, Andrew, in her article, do Asians benefit from white privilege and white proximity or do they have racism? I think it's complicated. And I'm telling you this, guys, people were not happy from the cover article to her tone to her thinking that she was Asian Malcolm X by saying it was balanced. We got to break it down from the micro to the mid to the macro. This is a complicated topic, but Hop Hop Boy's not scared. All right, everybody, we're going to break down the article. We're going to give our analysis. If you're excited about this video, please hit that like button and let's get into it. All right, David, so I feel like most people are angry, not because she didn't acknowledge that there was racism against Asians. She did. She said, oh, there's Asian discrimination, right? However, it was her argument that Asians might benefit from whiteness. So here's her argument right here. U.S. immigration policy has meant that a large portion of immigrants from Asia come with college and even graduate degrees. High incomes enable a significant number of them to move to well-off suburbs historically designed as islands of privilege for upper middle class white people leaving integrated cities. I mean, absolutely. I will agree that Asians coming from educated backgrounds, which is only a slice of Asians, like probably a third of them, because I think you can break it down, like 33% of Asians are trying to get into Harvard, which I think is even an overshoot, but let's just give her that. 33% of Asians are more like community college, state school, you know, just trying to get a regular job. And then 33% of Asians are like living in poverty, right? She's like talking about only a third of Asians. It's probably less than that, to be honest. But it's like, it's an advantage and I think that fitting into white systems as a cog and getting paid for it is an advantage, being able to do that if that's already your culture or that's your skill set. But I just don't understand how that is whiteness. Yeah, is it privilege if they come over here educated already from Asia? Like if they work their butt off in college in Asia, they come here to get their graduate school degree. Obviously they get a high paying job and then obviously they wanna move into a nice neighborhood so that their kids can get the best academic opportunities. And if those neighborhoods happen to be white, which a lot of them are, does that make them like giving into white people or does that make them white adjacent just because they want to be in those neighborhoods? Because there's a lot of Asians nowadays that are doing well for themselves moving to these now Asian dominant neighborhoods. So does that mean they're Asian, Asian adjacent? Or what about recently arrived Nigerian immigrants that also have an incredibly high rate of like grad school degrees and high salaries and high educational attainment? Are they also accessing whiteness because they're playing into a white run, even though it's like liberal white run academic scholastic system? I mean, I think it's just way more complex than even the way she said it. Because it's almost like, Andrew, our dad came over as an advanced computer science algorithm engineer, you know, in aerospace, right? His boss and his boss's boss and his boss's boss could not do any of the things that our dad did, but they made anywhere from like five to 30 X his salary. Our dad was like super underpaid for the value he brought to the aerospace industry and all the white guys that were doing sales at the country club, being able to smooth with other like Anglos were like making way, way, way more with like less studying. So like, I just don't understand to me, that's white privilege. You know, being in this country for eight, nine, 10 generations, being able to speak natively, you know, native English and being able to schmooze and like be good at like delineating tasks or like being viewed as a good manager. So I just cannot understand why hardworking engineers fall into like white privilege when it's work that white people have not wanted to do for like 30, 40 years. Listen, I'm not saying that there's not a small percentage of Asian Americans that might benefit from whiteness, like a small percent. Poss oh, you're I talking about USC, like Lily Huzz and the, the yeah, Michelle Yeah, I mean, there's privileged like Asians. There's even Asians who are part white, to be honest, or they look white, that they might benefit a little bit more from whiteness, right, and their proximity to Especially it. Especially like, I mean, to be honest, not to call them out, but like, some North Indians like Natasha yeah. Waraku herself 
almost like look like they could be from Italy or something. Yeah, yeah, she looks like European for sure. And then, so I'm just saying like, is it a privilege to work 30% harder than everybody else, 40% harder, but they get paid the same amount? Obviously you get paid well, but you're also working your butt off like crazy. So I don't know, to get underpaid and underrated, that's a privilege? Obviously, I'm not saying there doesn't need to be racial reconciliation. There doesn't need to be like racial equity, but just calling Asians like success patterns, white privilege or white adjacent is pretty just a wild reach to me. All right, so to back up her argument, she talks about benefiting from positive stereotypes. Of course, Asian Americans are diverse and working class Asian Americans do not experience the benefits of living in well-off neighborhoods, even if some may still benefit from teachers positive stereotypes about Asian Americans academic capabilities. So it's a privilege to have positive stereotypes? I don't know, man. I'm not saying there's not like a shred of truth to what she's saying. I'm like maybe a 10 to max 15% truthiness rating. But literally this was a crazy reach. And I'll tell you this, Andrew, she made some people on the internet really mad with this comment, Andrew. Andrew, a Southeast Asian person on internet said, you in particular need to keep working class yellow folk out of your upper class academic white adjacent mouth it's really an academic bubble moment that you're using a cover of photo of asians protesting literal murders lives lost to violent racism mostly in low-income and first generation communities to talk about harvard emissions so basically andrew she got roasted for only see focusing on like the lily huzz and the usc business crowd and the harvard academic crowd as pretty much her charactering characterizing all Asian Americans this way. Literally, she was ignoring in this article probably the reality of about 75 to 80% of Asian Americans just to prove her point. Now, I'm not saying she didn't come from like an elite Hindu Brahmin family herself, which is like amongst some of the highest earners, but she cannot speak for everybody in the 100% pie when she comes from a top 10% slice. Trust me, this argument doesn't fully have legs, especially when you look at the poverty rates of a lot of Asian groups. So Mong, Cambodian people, they actually have higher rates of poverty in America than black Americans. And actually, David, even Chinese, the fancy educated Asians, oh my gosh, 12% poverty rate in America. On a statistical basis, I'm not saying there's not inequities and I'm not saying that a lot of black people, black and brown people were not put in worse positions or like their environments are very tough to gain academic success. I 100% agree. And those things need to be addressed in the funding of better public schools. However, I'm just saying, there's a lot of poor working class Asians out there, and I don't know if saying that they benefit from positive stereotypes is helpful at all. Yeah, that's crazy to think that like Jaden Smith is like oppressed, but then like a poor Cambodian in Long Beach is not oppressed because they're Asian. <laughs> I'm pretty sure they actually get hit with more negative stereotypes than positive stereotypes, if you made me guess. And then another excerpt backs up her argument again. The history of residential segregation between black and white Americans ironically enabled Asian American professionals to reap the benefits of living in communities segregated by class and previously by race. Some see evidence like this as meaning that Asian Americans are white adjacent. Some people see it as evidence. I personally do not. Listen, man, if you are raised in a rich neighborhood, you're gonna have like see rich things and your environment is gonna be rich, right? And there's different types of rich. There's old money, there's new money, you know, there's like systems and non-systemic rich. Anyway, most people are middle class, right? They're living in a mixed neighborhood where there's a lot of poor people, there's a lot of middle class people, and there's a few rich people. And then of course there's people growing up in the hood, whether that's a hood suburb or a hood like inner city, you're gonna be subject to that environment. And each of those environments has a statistical range of probable outputs mathematically due to the environment, due to different factors and uh, cohesive families, broken families. So basically, based off the neighborhood you grow up in, compounded a little bit with your like culture at home, which is your like, I guess, ethnic culture or whatever culture your parents come from, which is daily behaviors, you're going to get a range of realistic outcomes. So I just don't like saying because a lot of Asians or certain Asians have like a middle class to upper middle class like range of outcomes, probabilities, that that's like white adjacent. What about white people like that are born into like crazy wealth because they like bought all these things and some of it was even driven by like evil means, you know? So I'm just like, whoa, 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 whoa. Why is there all of a sudden focus on yeah. Asians working themselves into the middle and possibly upper middle class. I mean, you know, as an Asian person who is 0% white, 
My DNA tests show us I am 0% white. It is kind of weird to be told I benefit from whiteness when literally I have zero white European blood in me. What are your final takeaways? Here's my takeaways, man. Listen, I understand that this issue is incredibly complex and I will give Natasha Waraku, you know, some sort of like props in the sense that that's what she ended off with, even though she had literally no actionable solutions, no like race or like socioeconomic class specific suggestions or anything like that. Society is like a ice cream cake, Andrew. Like. It's, it's such a complicated ice cream cake, I can't even tell you what flavor American society is because each flavor of ice cream cake has so many different layers. You got the frosting, you got the strawberry layer, the chocolate layer, the white layer, the base layer, the cookie crunch layer, and it is so complicated to say what is what. I would say that Asians benefiting from some things that are perceived to be like kind of white, and then Asians getting murdered in the streets, especially in low income or first generation neighborhoods, they both have some truthiness to them. I would say it's more true that Asians go through racism than even that we're white privileged, but there's some truthiness to them, but they exist on completely different geometric planes that do not intersect. They're on different layers of the cake. And it's sort of like this analogy I had, Andrew, back in the day where it's like life is kind of like Hunger Games mixed with Cannonball Run, mixed with like the Tour de France mixed with Zelda and like which peaks do you want to shoot for and which peaks are you happy at and do you want to just chill at this plateau? And it's just like, it's so crazy that somebody studies race and studies Asians for like 20 years, Andrew, and literally their arrival point is like, hey, Asians, we're not just wannabe whites. Like that was the final takeaway. I'm like, yo, guys, the conversation got to be like way beyond this at this point. I mean, we just got to have a better IQ for this discussion. I agree. And I do think that there is a conversation to be had with Asians about what they can do to help more underserved communities, whether that's underserved Asians or underserved non-Asian communities. Because I do feel like that there is a feeling amongst a lot of other people that they're like, you know, when Asians are successful or build uh, rich systems, th they don't benefit other minorities as much because maybe white people since they kind of run everything like they have been able to still reward a lot of like black and brown people for being elite or exceptionally good at something right like let's say sports and entertainment right like that's still right. white, white people still own those fields or like dominate those fields on a back end but on the front end there is a lot of black and latinos in the nba nfl i mean uh, uh mlb things like that yeah and so i think that there's just a conversation of like oh if asians are going to be so successful what are some things that they can do to help other people out and i think that is a legit conversation i do not think asian success leans on the fact that they stepped on other people's heads to get here i actually don't think most of the time that's true maybe in rare occasions but i really don't think it's true so i do think that there is a conversation that we can have, I do, but, but yeah. that's the conversation we should have. Not that, oh, are Asians benefiting from being white? Man, David, I don't think I've ever benefited from being white. Yeah, like there's a, I mean, I think you got to look at the white people that have been in America for 10, 9, 8 generations that like own all the companies and land and like assets and are part of like the military industrial complex, et cetera, et cetera, that Asians really have no yeah. nothing to do with Dude, any of those things. So Asians are still relatively new money in America. Yes, there were Asians here like since the 1900s, yes, but most of the Asians who are doing well are fairly new. And not even all the Asians are doing well. Like we said, there's a pie chart. And even if you were to overrepresent successful Asians at 33%, they're still the middle tier ones. And then there's still the lower tier ones still really going through it, going through the same things that are holding back anybody that's in a tough situation. Long story short, man, I just really don't like it when upper middle class Asians like Esther Wang or Natasha Waraku just act like they came across a crazy epiphany because they're almost like, not wrongfully, but they're almost holding the discussion back by acting like the discussion was at a 1.0 or 2.0 level. We're trying to get to 5.0, 6.0 iPhone right now. Why are you trying to rewind it to like iPhone 3G? Bro, it almost feels like for the first time in their life, they're like, I met some poor Asians who felt scared in the streets. And that finally has changed my mind. And I'm like... The last thing I will say, just so people don't think we're going too hard on like Esther Wang and Adasha Waraku, because I am tending to be like a very balanced person. I will say that a lot of Asians that really are in tune with like the real Asian experience, it's true, we don't become writers. 
and we're not prolific and we're not like navigating those journalistic media systems. So obviously the people who end up navigating it are from a certain type of background and certain type of perspective and have seen a certain amount of reps in life. So it kind of goes both ways. Those people need to do a better job of understanding the holistic Asian pie because they're from a narrow slice. But obviously people from like the other less privileged slices of the Asian pie, maybe we got to do a better job of being proactive and not only reactive. All right, everybody, we're going to end it right there. Please let us know in the comments down below what you think about all this. Is there even an, a good argument to make about Asians being beneficiaries of whiteness? Um, I just don't think she made the arguments here. This, this, these were not good arguments, but let me know in the comments down below. Obviously, and also let us know the conversation of like, what are some things like let's brainstorm some ideas of like how successful Asians and particularly obviously successful Asians can help other people you know yeah I'm not saying that Asians don't got their things to work on too yeah. for sure it's not a perfect group of people like could be more caring yeah so let us know in the comments down below guys uh and of course you know the hot pot boys we are not afraid of these hard-hitting topics no 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 we want to talk about them we want to put them out there because we think that they are helpful conversations just a lot more helpful than whatever this article said. All right, everybody. Thank you so much for watching the Hot Pop Boys. And until next time, we out. Peace. Peace.